What's up everyone? We're back with you today to bring you yet another exciting video. All right, so some of you might know, some of you might not know, but Saturdays and Sundays are basically our water change days. I went ahead and changed the water on all of these tanks in quarantine, and then I'm working on doing this 550 now. Along with that, after this fills back up, they'll be acclimated to our tank water. As you can see, it's still a bit cloudy. There's absolutely too many fish in here still, but we're gonna go ahead and take the arowana out. We're gonna take this little hybrid cat out. We're going to take the tiger shovel nose out. We're going to take this marble hybrid out. And of course the two peacock bass will go ahead and join the peacock bass tank. Then down here, we'll go ahead and take this Oscar. We're gonna put him up in the 2200. And then over here, we've got a few lads that can actually go. In here, we've got this female Leo hen hybrid. We're gonna go ahead and put her in with uh, the colony of females over in the 550. Then down here, we have this Tambiki. I'm gonna go ahead and put him in the 3000 and we're gonna boot this bowfin out to the pond room and give him his own tank. Along with certain someone over here, we have this largemouth bass up. I don't have the light on. I'm gonna put them two in a tank together and start our native species tank. So pretty cool. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a net and we're gonna go ahead and get started here. As you can see, most of the lights are off on some of our tanks because we don't keep them on if people are not here viewing the tank. So there's the 1000, there's the 4400, no lights on whatsoever. I do however have these lights on because I was working in these tanks. So before we get started I wanted to hit upon these cichlids here. You guys have been seeing them in vi videos. I am still treating these guys so they still have a little while in quarantine. And Larry the Lobster down here. I don't think we're gonna actually try him in the uh, Bellagio tank. What I think we should do, which would actually be a more suitable fit for him, if we bring Larry the Lobster all the way over here, I think into the angelfish tank. I think that they are peaceful enough, they won't mess with the, the lobster. We can go ahead and put a cave in here for Larry and he can have this whole tank he will eat all the detritus off the, the bottom. And I think it would be a, a nice little addition to this tank, give, give it some contrast and color. And uh, we, we assure that Larry makes it out alive. We thought about this tank, but there's just too much going on in here with the discus. So I don't think that would be a good match. So I think this 90 gallon over here would be perfect for Larry the Lobster. Oh, and before I forget, there's one more thing. If you guys remember, this black devil cat was kind of getting picked on and tore up by some other catfish in the, this tank. We took some peacock bass out of here, and I think we finally got this tank dialed in. We gave everyone their own little corner. Right here, you can see this uh, black devil kind of made these logs into a little cave for them, as well as the Wallago Leary over here. They now stay away from each other. The Jow and the Goonch are mighty good friends over here on this side. The Pleco kind of just roams around the tank. He doesn't really bother no one. And of course you got Hubert here, which he's 99.9% .9 healed up. You can see that wound is closed over. There's nothing on his back. This one's gone. That one's gone. That one's gone. So he is 100% ready to go. He eats like a pig, so I have no worries with him. You can see the little tortoise is taking a soak. We have him tent temporarily. So we put him in here to soak. This was the uh, box turtles enclosure, but he can at least go out there, sun bask, get some UVB, and then he likes to bask over here in the water and soak. So then we will take, take him outside and we'll put him in a pen outside and he'll be out there all day long and he'll get, get to soak for a few hours in the water. This wor works for now because he's smaller, but of course as he grows this will not work out. So we're gonna have to 
devise some sort of plan to get him a pond that he can soak in, that's shallow, that he can't drown in, and it's always fed constant fresh water, which I'm thinking we can do from the pond somehow, but that is a future project that will be going on. Just wanted to give you guys a little update here. Alrighty, first up, we're going to get this Paku out of here. I know he's going to make a mess. He was in this bottom 75. Not the easiest tank, but that was actually a lot better than I thought. Okay, Mr. Black Paku. Uh, look at him. He's a little fellow compared to the big guys. Alrighty, so we're gonna go and uh, start grabbing a few more. I know this net's too small. I want to actually use this sock net. So we're gonna grab big cats first. I'm going to get it the first try, but we're going to try here. That ain't going to work. Take two. I'm trying to be nice and transfer them the easiest way possible. Now we're going to have to get knitted. Stop for a second, I'd let you out. Oh, we forgot where. <laughs> right, that's two down. A couple more to go. Alright, let's get this big puppy out of here. Sorry, Rick. Nice catch, though. <laughs> oh, company. All righty. On to the next one. It's like we clear out these, these tanks and give a bunch of fish away and let their stock again. The never any process around here. I've got someone coming to pick up this three foot bar on Monday, so he'll be off of our hands. And I just have the red tail and the iridescent shark to get rid of. But the problem with these is they're all massive. And you know, the majority of people who are calling me, oh, I have, you know, a 300 gallon tank or I have a thousand gallon pond. And I'm like, well, sorry, bud. Like, that's a little too small for these fish as is, let alone fully grown because these guys are not done growing. So I kind of have to be, be the bad guy and tell them you can't have the fish, but that's a part of our job, that's our duty here, trying to give these fish the best home possible. Oh, I thought the small guy. <laughs> Now if he starts getting picked on, I can just scoop him out of here easily and transfer him over to the 750. All right, this last guy who's been giving me the most trouble. <laughs> he is big, he's powerful, and he doesn't want to go. All right, the cover with me, fella. Oh, 
There you go. Look at him. Did that with uh, no injury. That is amazing. All righty, I'm going to go open up some lids and then we'll come back and grab them bass. All right, so we are ready to grab these peacock bass. This one right here, me as hell. He already bit the crap out of me. So uh, I didn't like sticking my hands in this tank. Came up, I wasn't even expecting it, and he swallowed my fingers. All right, you're back in the same spot. There we go. This is a long drop. Get him over to the tank. Bam. All right, bud. Go join your friends. As you guys can see, the rest of the bass are doing great. They're getting their colors back. They look awesome. Now we got one more to add here. Okay, you got the last bass, but I don't see where he's at. I know he's back there. Oop. Yeah, it's hard to see with all this turbulent water on top. There you go, I can see him over here now. Oh, you already need to break up with the Yeah, the 3000. Okay. We're going to all flip and throw it. So this is another gold cowberry, so that'll make us have two in that tank. Okay, you can see our gold cowberry is right there front and center. Now once he gets colored up, I think he'll look pretty nice in here as well. So now we have two monos, two gold cowberries, two pipitama, and then a lonely azul. But oh, man, he is beautiful. All right, let's go see what else we can wrangle up here. All right, we're going to wrangle up this Oscar. And I think that might be it for today. But you never know. Hey, buddy. There you go. Beautiful fish. Alright, so I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. We just cleared out some of our quarantine. We placed them in uh, tanks, you know. They have their forever home now. We still have a bunch more, more to re re home. Still have a couple that are in quarantine. So once those cichlids clear up, we'll be putting them into the Bellagio. We'll be sure to film that for you guys. We will catch you in the next video. Stay fishy, my friends.